Jared Poland, Fronos Photo.com, and I'm here today to cook. Well, actually, I'm gonna bake. I am making a devil's food cake from scratch from the box. Now, this is photo oriented type video. I have what, four cameras going. I've got the main camera, D7000, with a 50 millimeter 1.4. I've got the D3S with the 24 to 72.8. I have the contour helmet cam right here, and then I have up here a D3100 with a 16 millimeter fisheye lens. Now, there are some interesting things that I have to take into consideration here. That camera, D7000, gets 20 minutes. This camera, the D3S, gets five minutes. This camera up here gets 10 minutes of recording time, and then the contour cam gets I don't know, an infinite amount of time. Uh, how am I lighting this? Well, I've got my, uh, what are these? These are these Westcott Spider Light 6s, TD6s. There's six bulbs in that one, there's six bulbs in that one, there's big soft boxes, and yes, big soft boxes. So that's what I've got to set this up. Now I wanna go ahead and bake this cake and go from there. So now we're ready to bake this cake. What are we gonna do? Well, let's open it up, and well, actually, let's just read the directions. Here we go. I need three eggs. I need a one and a third cup of water, which I've already mixed, and I need a half a cup of vegetable oil, which I have right here. I already have mixed, mixed. I've already taken my water, so I've got my water right here. That's right there. Um, what else? I have my three eggs ready to crack and go into the bowl. I've got my brand new mixer. It goes six speeds. That's only speed three. I can't imagine what speed six would be like. That's only three. That's half the power. It goes to 11, everybody. It goes to, can you see that? It goes to 11 up there. 11. Yeah. So what's first? Well, we want to preheat the oven to 350. So I'm going to start with that. I'm going to turn over here. Bake, bake, hit the bake button, 350, start. It's gonna get its way motoring, and we're gonna be starting from there. So how do I like to do this? Well, I just like to open the box. And I do say it's from scratch because I do mix all of the stuff together, and that technically is scratch. Hello, box, why don't you open up better? So we've got this, this awesome mixing stuff. Oh, it smells so good. It's so dreamy. Chocolate. Chocolate, 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 chocolate. Um, now I need to open it. How about we use this knife to open it? Be careful in the kitchen when using knives. You do not want to cut yourself because that wouldn't be a good thing. So there we go, we've got that. That's there. We're dumping our cake mix into this big mixing bowl that I picked up. Here we go, mix, mix. Cake mix, cake mix, cake mix, cake mix. Oh, it smells so good. I'm not gonna snort this stuff because it's powdery. It would end up in my nose. So we've got that over there. Oh, by the way, I'll be cooking with a bunt pan today. Bunt pan right here. I've already pre-greased it with my vegetable oil because I don't want my cake, back, cake mix or my cake to stick to it when I'm ready to take it out and go to where I wanna go. So I'm gonna leave that over here for the time being. We're gonna get ready to mix all the ingredients together and then we're gonna go from there to then put the cake in the oven and wait for it to bake as it takes anywhere between 40 and 45 minutes when you are using a bunt pan. And that's what I'll be using is a bunt cake pan. It was my grandmother's, uh, it was Lil's, so that's what we'll be using. Now let's get back to mixing right after this. So I'll just tell you for the, photo, the, you know, for the photo guys out there, why I keep going back and forth or why I take a break is because the D3S only gives me five minutes of recording time where every other camera either gives me 20 or 10. So I wanna put this all together so we have multiple angles to make this happen because that's what it's all about. So we've got our mixture, our cake mix right up in here. We've got our water, we've got our eggs. So why don't we throw our water in there first? Boom. Water. Now we've got to mix out, let me get my directions here. We need a half cup of vegetable oil. So here we go, vegetable oil. I'm gonna measure it to a half cup. Let me find that first. That's four ounces for all of you guys who know what you're talking about because I don't when it comes to ounces. So we've got my four ounces of vegetable oil. We're gonna throw the vegetable oil in here. Actually, we're gonna pour it gently. Mmm, vegetable oil. Half cup, boom. Done with you. 
Just double checking, half cup. Now it's time for the eggs. Now there is an art to cracking eggs. I've learned this, Guy Fieri style. You ready? Boom, tap, pull, gone. Except you don't want to get eggshells in there and I got one in there. That would be not a good surprise for somebody. So that's one egg. Let's get another one, boom. Two eggs, ooh, hello. Hello, how are you? Mmm. One more, clack, pull, done. We've got our mixture ready to go. I've got my towel waiting over here. Boom, good. All right, now it's time to start mixing. I have a sunbeam mixer, which I picked up here. Uh, actually, I picked up online, and now it's time to mix. Let's start with off. <laughs> Let's go to on. Whoa, that's some extreme power already. I haven't even turned it. I'm on two. Well, how can there be a two if one doesn't turn on? Anyway, let's go higher. Oh, I'm going higher. Should I push it? Oh, we're pushing it. Wow, this is a great mixer. You see this style that I'm doing here? I'm turning and going at the same time. More power. Overdrive. Mmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm turning the bowl as I mix. I'm making sure that it's even and nice and smooth. You don't want lumps in your chocolate cake. You want it to be smooth, smooth, smooth. Boom. What am I at? I'm at four. Should we push it to six? Overdrive. We're on six. All right. I don't know if I can handle that power at six, so I'm, I'm turning it back down. Yes, yes, this is smooth, this is nice. What a great cake mixer. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's looking smooth right here. I'm really liking this. Yeah, that's nice. All right, so we've got our mixture done. I forgot to take out a plate for the, the um, you know, for this thing, because I don't want to get it all over the counters, because then i got to clean more. But I will be licking this a little bit later. Licking it is awesome. So there we go, we got that. That's going to wait for this. Usually if Lil was around, I would, give, I would give Lil a spoon. And the last time I gave Lil a spoon, I'm like, Lil, I'm like, wait. Don't lick the spoon yet, because I want to take a picture. So I hand her the spoon. Don't, don't lick it yet, Lil. Oh, okay. And she starts licking the spoon, and, she's, and she goes ahead and doesn't even listen to me anyway. So that, that's Lil for you. She's going to do what she wants. So I've got this all ready to go. Next step up is to get our bunt pan ready. Remember what I said. I already pre-oiled this. So it's been pre-oiled, and... That's just gonna help so that, you, it, so that it won't stick. You could use Pam in the future. I don't like the buttery tasting Pam. Uh, I just get the regular Pam. Or you could use flour to coat the inside so it doesn't stick after you cook it. But I like to use the, um, I like Pam, but vegetable oil worked out pretty well as well. So when we come back, we are going to get ready to put our cake in the oven. It is preheated. It's at 295 degrees. So by the time we come back, it will be ready to go at 350 degrees for about 40 to 45 minutes. All right, you hear the beep, that means that our oven is preheated to 350 degrees, and it's time to go ahead and get our mixture, which is right here, poured into the bowl. I like to use these rubber things. Oh yeah. Ooh. Ow. Ow! I like these things, they're like rubber spatulas, and it helps you get the mixture where you want it to go, or it could be used as the, uh, a good device for, for something. So, what are we gonna do here? We've got our, our bunt pan, we've got our cake mixture, and we are going to fold it in. I mean, really, I'm just going to dump it in like this, and it's going to spread out evenly across my bunt pan. So we're pouring, we're pouring, we're pouring, we're pouring. I mean, this is at the point, I don't want to get in, here we go. I'm going to use my rubber spatula. Boom. Boom. Oh, yeah. I try not to get too much of it on the edges of the pan because that's where it burns and then you get that burnt smell of burnt cake. So I try not to do that too often. Oh, there's so much goodness down here at the bottom of the, the thingy thing. What is this thing called? A mixing bowl. Yeah, look at all this extra goopy goop. Now, the fun part about when you're cooking and you're making cake is obviously, well, not the cleanup, 
but when you get to lick the bowl and lick the spoons, that's what it's all about, because who doesn't like licking the spoons? I like licking the spoons. Lil likes licking the spoons. My brother likes licking the spoons. You know what? When we were younger, you know, it's funny. My brother and I, my mom would make the cake, and we would help make it, because she taught us how to cook when we were young. And, you know, I'd get a spoon. My brother would get a spoon. He'd get to lick one of the... Uh, this, the, the mixer things, I'd get to lick the other one, and then of course we'd fight over who could get more and, and all that stuff, but that's what brothers do. He was older, so I'd probably just let him win, just like when we were playing video games. I'd let him win, because the reason I would let him win at video games is because if, if I won for some reason and, and got lucky, I would get a punch in the arm, and I was tired of getting my arms punched. Um, yeah, I don't like getting my arms punched. All right, so we've got most of this stuff out. These These yeah, this is good. This is good. We got most of this out. I got some on the counter. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, that's great. So we've got that. Oh, I'm going to leave. Oh, oh, I'm not going to lick that yet. We will lick that in a minute. Keep my counter clean. All right, so we're ready to put it into the oven. Here's our cake mix right here, and it's ready to go. You don't need to let it sit. You just want to throw it in. 350 degrees. Open the oven. I left a pan in there. That's not a good thing. Let me take the pan out. I've got a glove. I need enough glove is what I need. So pan, you're going up there because you're probably hot. Never reach into the oven with anything not like a glove. Boom, right in the middle. So we've got that in there, in the middle. Um, clock, where's my kitchen timer? Cook timer, 43 minutes and 17 seconds is what I'm putting it in. What? No, 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 no. I don't, don't put on the, this thing. What is this thing called? A microwave for 45 minutes. That wouldn't be good. Oh, that's cook time. Well, duh, I want, I want, what do I want? I want timer, timer, 43 minutes and 17 seconds, start. The clock is running and we've got that going. So what do we do in the meantime? Well, you could start cleaning up because cleaning up's good. So now we've got the cake in the oven. It's going to cook. We're going to let it go for a while, 43 minutes and 17 seconds before we check it again. Uh, but now comes the fun part, or right after this comes the fun part, so we'll be right back. Even though cleanup isn't the fun part, the part of cleanup is fun. It's, it's, it's always good when you just can sit here and be like, oh, yeah. Mmm. Mmm. Sometimes I think this is better than the cake itself. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Another reason why I like using these rubber spatulas, I can get into the bowl more, and I get more chocolate mix on here. And I get to lick it. Oh, yeah. So, you know, oh, uh-huh, mm-hmm. I shouldn't really be licking too much of this, but I'm going to anyway. I'm going to stop right there. One more. This is the last one. No, really. No, really. No, that's the last one. All right, that's the last one. Oh, but there's more on the plate. Anyway, in the meantime, you know, while we're waiting for this cake to cook and we've got 41 minutes left, I picked up these, um, what are these? They're Canon lenses. They're 24 to 105 F4s, but they're shot glasses. And uh, these came from, I think, Photo Jojo. I've got six of them, and why don't I demonstrate how they work? Let me get something to drink. Walk over here. Apple juice. We're going to do shots of apple juice, just to demonstrate how these shot glasses work. Um, hey, who are you texting me? But no, I I'm going to do shots of apple juice, because uh, there's one shot. Here comes another one. These are pretty cool shot glasses. Good for any photographer. I mean, who doesn't want Canon shot glasses? I wish they were Nikon shot glasses. If they were Nikon shot glasses, I would have been even happier. But hey, they're Canon shot glasses. And this is how they work. They hold a shot, and I think it's pretty big. I'm not an expert in shots. That's one down. That's cold. Mm, I'm cold on my teeth. I got one more. Good thing this isn't whiskey or 
or uh, uh, what else would there be? There would be whiskey and there could be, ooh, tequila shots would be good. Mm. So there you have it. Those are shot glasses, photo Jojo, they're photo glasses. Pretty cool, I'll hold it up to this camera right here. Look at that, Canon shot glasses. So now, in the meantime, when I'm waiting for another 40 minutes to end, I'm gonna get to cleaning. And uh, so basically, it's good to clean in the midst of cooking so that it's done by the time your cooking is done. And that's about it. So here's some te techniques for when we're getting ready for the cake. You are supposed to put in a long piece of, like, like a toothpick, and you put the toothpick in, and if the cake sticks to it, it's done. If it comes out gooey and, and stuff like that, it still needs to be cooked longer. I don't have any of those here, so I'll have to improvise and come up with something else to put into the cake to determine if it's done or not. So let's just go and start cleaning, and then we'll get back from there. While the cake is cooking, I figured we would talk a little bit about photography and how this ties into cooking. It doesn't. Well, it doesn't that much. Uh, really, cooking photography or, or food photography is something fun that you can try for yourself. Uh, how do you do this? Well, if you've got good lighting, you've got off-camera flash, that's going to help you shoot food. Um, really, anything you make, you should start taking pictures of it just to practice what you're doing. Some techniques you can use, uh, you're going to want a tripod so that you can you know, set things up on the, pr on the right angles. You're going to want to, sometimes you could use a macro lens, other times you could even use a 70 to 200 all the way out at 200 to give you some interesting effects and focus on certain parts of the food. Now, and I'll tell you, this comes in handy if you're shooting events, corporate events, weddings, and things like that where they've got dessert and they have a lot of different things that they're, um, that they put out and you want to get some of those detailed shots. I've gone out there with the 70 to 200 and focused on that one cherry or something on the ice cream around the other Sundays and it, and it gives great detail and focus to that one cherry that I'm shooting, uh, shooting. So that's something good to work with. If you wanted to shoot photos of your cake and you've got your cake stand, Kareen, Tureen, whatever they call this. By the way, this thing is awesome. Hello, this is my cake thingy. It was a gift from my brother and Helene, uh, my brother's wife, my sister-in-law, and it's really good because not only is it a good cake thing to keep it fresh, look, that's one thing, but guess what else you can do to it? You can flip it over, you can use it for dip, right here. You can put vegetables in there, or you can put some Kool-Aid in here. Preferably Hawaiian punch, um, and it can be a Kool-Aid thing, but we're going to use it for the cake later, so that's why it's just like this. But yeah, food photography, what could you do? Um, if you're on the tripod and you've got lights, I've got these um, continuous lights on right now from Westcott, and I, would, I could use these for shooting food. They're in soft boxes. It gives you nice lighting. Keep in mind that food, you want to get your color as properly or as correct as possible, because if something's too yellow or it's too green, it just doesn't look appetizing, and somebody wouldn't eat it, so it wouldn't be good for advertising. Um, you could set it up right on the counter in the kitchen. You could set something up with a deep background. You can put it on a white background. You can put it on a table with a nice tablecloth, shoot from a higher angle so it looks like you're at a restaurant, and just do some, just some playing around with focus and uh, aperture, because sometimes you're gonna have a higher f-stop, you know, of f-16, because you wanna show everything in focus from front to back, um, or you may wanna have a very shallow depth of field, like 2.8, for when you're shooting and you want to get the details and blow everything else out. For advertising, it's pretty cool. You get a wine bottle, you get some wine glasses, you put them together. It's all practicing. I mean, this is an assignment that we were given in school back in the day. Things like shoot food. I mean, that's what school is all about. It's about giving you the different techniques that you need to shoot uh, or that you've never shot uh, and just having you try that and that's it. I mean, they're assignments. You do these assignments so that you're ready in the real world when you go out there and get those paying gigs. So if you do a little bit of, you know, 10, 20 different types of assignments in school, you at least have some knowledge on how to do it when you get out of school. So now we're going to get back to the cake as soon as it comes out of the oven. And in the meantime, I'll pick my hair, but I won't pick it in the kitchen. So we're back and the cake is almost done. There is one minute and two seconds left on the clock. Uh, remember how I said I like to test with a toothpick? I don't have toothpicks, but I, I found the next best thing. It's close enough. We got some chopsticks. Booyah! So let's, um, let's test the cake. How do we do this? Best thing to do is I open up the oven. I hope I didn't burn my cake. And then we're just gonna 
put the thinnest end of the chopstick in here and see how we do. Yeah, not even close. Not even close. We're going to shut the oven back up. And we're going to let it go. It's going to be longer than this. So now we're just going to keep an eye on it. You can see how much the chopstick is still gooey. It's really gooey. So it's probably going to need anywhere between five and 10 extra minutes to basically finish. This is the first time I'm using this oven to bake a cake at 350 degrees. Uh, for the, we, we did 43 minutes and 17 seconds. It looks like it's going to need a little longer than that to make it happen. So in the meantime, why don't I tell you about the setup? I'm going to use the contour cam here. Hello, contour cam. How are you? So here's the setup. Not sure how good it's going to look with this camera, but you can see the Westcott lights. It's probably going to be blown out because of the lights. Um, but yeah. Anyway, I'll come back and I want to do this a different way for you. I'll put this camera back here uh, and I'll show it to you in a different way. Now you're seeing the setup behind the camera, uh, the lights that I used. These are those spider light TD6s that I talked about from Westcott. There are six fluorescent coil lamps in there, really bright, really evenly matched colors, very affordable. I think they're pretty affordable. They come with the, I got the Westcott stands. These are the 13 foot stands that go all the way up. They're air cushioned. Um, these big soft boxes, I forget the exact size, but you can see, you know, inside their silver reflector as you take this off. But this gives me a nice even soft lighting that lit this. So it looks like one of those TV kitchens uh, when you're making the videos. So I've got two of these set up. They switch on and off. I've got my three-legged thing tripod, which I use for some extra, um, just putting another camera on if I really wanted to. So this is the three-legged thing, the older model. They've just come out with a new model. Uh, over here, I've got where my main camera was. This was the D7000. I'm gonna move over to here. That's where my angle was. This is set up on a Vanguard tripod. This bad boy just came in with this ball grip. You know, I like ball grips. I haven't used this yet. I just set it up for this, but this is a pretty good, easy moving ball grip with the D7000 on it with the 50 millimeter 1.4 Nikon. Um, that's interesting. Oh, that's right. How, what was interesting was it's, I, I didn't set it to autofocus because I, I locked my focus in where I wanted it on me when I was talking about cooking. Uh, so that's that. That's on its tripod, very sturdy, good ball head. The three-legged things are great tripod. These TD6s from Westcott work out really well. And this is the behind the scenes look at what basically made this video happen. All right, so now we gave it a little extra time. Let's take it out and try the toothpick method again and see if we're done. Uh, the best thing to do is not to overcook a cake, which I hope I didn't do. So here we go, taking it out, putting it right here. Let's poke some holes in it. I got my choppy stick right here. Boom. And it's not sticking. So it's done. The cake is done. I hope it's not overcooked. A good thing that I've done in the past is when it's still a little bit gooey, I take it out just so that it finishes cooking on its own when you take it out of the oven. So now really all you need to do is let it cool down before we then put it onto our cake uh, our cake tray and then take it wherever you want. This is a really good devil's food cake, really simple to make. Uh, that's it, we just followed the directions, mixed it, cooked it, stuck it, ate it. We didn't eat it yet, but hopefully I didn't burn it. That's always my biggest concern is burning it. This is the first time I said, you know, like I said that I've used this particular oven to make a cake uh, and that's about it. I thank you guys. I thank you guys up there too. Thank you for joining me in my kitchen as we made this cake. Stay tuned for some bonus footage, which is gonna talk about how I made this setup, what cameras I used, even though I said it earlier, uh, and just a little bit of insight in the cameras, the setup, uh, and how I made this happen. Thank you for joining me in my kitchen. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya. So we had the three things that you saw. You had 
the well, four cameras. The contour camera, which is 170 degree field of view, I put that on the counter. We had the D3, the D3100 with a 16 millimeter Nikon fisheye, which I manually focused because that's not an AFS. That was on a super clamp, which was up above the cake mixing where I was. We had the main camera as the D7000 with the 50 millimeter 1.4. We had a secondary angle camera with the Nikon D3S, which was right, basically right here. Um, giving us the wide angle with the 24 to 70. I used my Sony UWP wireless microphones to record the, the audio into the D7000, which was the main camera, and everything else will be synced up from there. All the mixes, all the, ca uh, the different camera angles will be changed from that camera, and all the audio will be just from the D7000. So really, that's what went into making this. I had no help. I did this all myself today. Um, it would have been easier, obviously, if I had somebody to help me with all the angles, but I pre-focused. I um, set everything to manual exposure. I got that right before I even started. I didn't want it to be an aperture priority where if the light moved or if I blocked the light that the exposure changed. So I wanted to keep that the same each time uh, just so that it was even all the way across the board. So it was a fun experiment, made the cake, talked about raw versus JPEG and how burning a cake and you can't go back and all that good stuff. Um, but it was fun to try multi angles. This is another thing I can add to my book that if I say, hey, yeah, I can do a, f a four camera shoot on my own, do it professionally, light it professionally. And that's another thing I have on my resume and my repertoire to go ahead and basically tell a client. I can show this as an example. I film this, I edit, well, I'm not, gonna, I'm not doing the editing. I'm sending that over to the editor to cut multi-angles because that's just not something that I'm capable, or it's not something that, not that I'm capable of doing, it's not something I really wanna spend the time doing because he does such an amazing job. So really, that is it. That was baking a cake that's using all, showing you all the behind the scenes. It was pretty fun. This is my kitchen. These are my lights, these are my setups, and that's it. Thank you guys for watching.